Welcome back. I want to spend a few minutes with you explaining rake and trail as it's very important to understand. This is meant as a supplement to my air ride bike build. And it's extra important there where the front axle is dynamic and moves because of the air shocks. My name is Matt. If you haven't done so, check out my intro video. It explains who I am and why I'm here. And click that like, subscribe, and share button for me. Help me get others engaged and out in their shots. Let's take a look. Let's talk about rake first. And rake is the angle that the steering neck is tilted backwards from vertical. This is not the fork tubes. It's the steering head. And it's represented as degrees with zero being straight up and down. Rake can range from 22 degrees up to as much as 50 degrees in some extended chopper builds. The typical sizes that you'll see, plus or minus a degree or two, for a sport bike, about 25 degrees, a touring bike, about 29 degrees, a cruiser, about 32 degrees, and then a chopper, 35 plus degrees. Next, let's talk trail. If you put an imaginary line through the center of your steering neck that runs parallel all the way to the floor and put a mark, then use your big square and find the point directly below your front axle and put a mark. The distance between those two points is the trail. Positive trail means the axle is behind the point where the forks intersected the ground. And you never want negative trail, a situation where the axle is in front of the forks on the ground. Typical trail sizes range on a sport bike from maybe two to four inches, a touring bike maybe three to six inches, a cruiser, maybe three to eight inches, and then a chopper could be four to 10 inches. Now let's look at how rake and trail work together and why it's important. And the best way to do that is with a shopping cart wheel. When you look at a front shopping cart wheel, you can see that the neck has zero degrees of rake. And in this position, it has a great deal of trail. When you come put forward pressure on that shopping cart, that wheel is gonna to wanna to stay in that position and that's what causes your shopping cart to track forward. What if you walked up to that shopping cart and the wheel was in this position? Now that wheel is in a negative trail situation. As soon as you start applying forward force, that wheel is immediately gonna to wanna to spin around and start tracking with the direction of the force. It wants to be in a positive trail situation. If that wheel was straight below the neck, zero degrees of rake and no trail, positive or negative, when you put forward pressure on that shopping cart, the front end would just be fighting each other and it would be jumping all around. The same thing happens with the front end of a motorcycle. You want the bike to be in a positive trail situation so that it wants to track forwards. For that tracking to happen appropriately, your bike needs more than two inches of trail, and you absolutely do not want to be in a zero or negative trail situation. The minute you let go of those handlebars, that front end is just going to want to flip around. You want to be in a positive trail situation, and you want your bike to track straight. Trail tends to happen naturally if you have a standard fork set up, meaning the axle is in line with the front fork tubes. In that case, as you get over 20 degrees of rake, your trail naturally increases as your rake increases. And vice versa, as your rake gets steeper, the trail gets shorter. Let's talk about how rake and trail affect bike handling. With steeper rake and lower trail, the bike will turn better and faster, but it'll be less stable at high speeds. With longer rake and longer trail, the bike will be harder to turn, but it will be more stable at high speeds. 
And you can get in a situation where the trail is so long with extended chopper builds where the bike just wants to fall over at slow speeds. Here you can see a hypothetical turn line of a bike with a steep rake and short trail versus one with a longer rake and a wider trail. Next, let's talk about how to adjust trail. And just like mentioned, you can adjust trail by adjusting your rake. As you make the rake steeper, it makes your trail less naturally. And as you increase your rake, it makes the trail longer. You can also adjust the offset of the forks in the triple tree. Remember that rake is always the steering neck tube, not the fork tubes. And most forks will have an offset between the center of that steering stem bolt and the center of the fork tubes. You can see here is an example of a triple tree that has a very short offset. And here is an example of a triple tree that has about an inch of offset. Increasing this offset distance will reduce your trail. Where this gets more challenging is in applications like a spring or fork build that pushes that axle out forward. And in my case, with the air ride bike build and air shocks, it's also moving that axle out forward. This can help in some elongated chopper builds with extended rakes and extended forks. By pushing that axle forwards, it can actually help bring the trail into a more acceptable level. But in a steeper rake situation, it could put you in a situation with very small trail or even negative trail. And that's the case I'm in with this air ride build. You can fix this as mentioned earlier by increasing the rake or adjusting the offset in your triple tree. Let's take a look at how I measure rake and trail on my frame jig. And it's important to use a frame jig when you're building to make sure that your back axle, front axle, and frame all stay square. I use this magnetic degree indicator and I set my rake to my desired rake. And in this case, I set the neck tube to 30 degrees. In my air ride bike, I have about 27, it's really about 27 and a half degrees. Then I take this gun laser and I like it because it has this little mount on it that helps keep it a little bit square. And I just use a block, a piece of wood or a piece of metal, thick metal I have laying around to move it out from the fork neck so that I can make a line, as I mentioned earlier, that hypothetical line through the steering neck and down to the floor. In this case, because I wanted with the air ride bike for it to be quite a bit off the ground, I am using the floor as a plane of reference. I know it's not perfect, but it's what I have and I'm not building a spaceship here, I'm just building a, a small bike. So I use that laser and I mount it to the steering neck with that wood or metal like I mentioned with a zip tie. And then I put a mark on the ground where that intersects. Then I come back up and I find the point with my large square just straight below where the front axle will be. And I put another mark. Measure this distance and it's gonna tell you your trail. As I mentioned, I'm using the floor as a plane of reference since I want my bike so far off the ground. But if I'm building a chopper or something else where I expect the mainframe to be very low to the ground, I'll actually use the frame itself as a plane of reference. And in that case, what I do is I clamp a piece of sheet metal to the front end of my frame jig, and then I reinforce the other side to make sure it's level. I then use that piece of sheet metal to make my marks rather than the floor. Well, that takes care of rake and trail. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment or send me a message at heritageRestoWorks at gmail.com. And if you haven't, check out my other videos. Help me get others engaged and out in their shop.